Welcome back to watching Game On. Time to take you to the world of football. And here we're staying with women's football. Now, it's all about um, a countdown to the Women's World Cup. But here in Nigeria, the Super Falcons of Nigeria sport for this year's Women's World Cup to be co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand have been unveiled. Finally, finally, the 23-player squad, which was announced on Friday, was published on the Nigerian Football Federation NFF Twitter handle. Among notable names listed for the tournament include Asisato Shuala, Ashley Plumtree, Onoma Abi De Desire, of course, of Paranusia, Chiamaka Nadozie, Francisca Odega, Rashida Ajibade, Four Forza, and Women's Atletico Madrid. And we've got Uche Nakanu and Gift Monday. But there are talks and reactions coming from this list, the unveiling of this list, the list for the Women's World Cup Super Falcons. And here we've got Sam Amadou, of course, um, he's the head of communications for the Nigerian Women's Football League and also a journalist who follows women's sport, women's football. I call him the Commissioner for Women Affair. I don't care. He has to take that title over there. Thank you so much, Sam Amadou, for joining us on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me and uh, great to be part of this evening. All right, let's get straight to it right now. You've been brought to talk about women's matters. What um, are your thoughts on the squad list released by coach Randy Wardram? Now, are there any surprises or notable, um, notable omissions that's um, from your opinion in this squad list? I know we've heard a lot of reactions. Social media is bubbling after the release of this name. So, did you get any surprises from this um, team list? Also, are there omissions that uh, were noticeable by you? Oh, well, definitely, when you have a list like this, you must have omissions uh, from the sport. You must have uh, uh, surprise inclusions. You must also have uh, notable exemptions. And I think for me, the notable exemption uh, exception was uh, Umbaje Fobi. You know, uh, she was uh, a major. Uh, in, she was majorly instrumental in our uh, winning goal against Cameroon, and we thought qualified for the Women's World Cup. Uh, you know, remembering how she gave. Uh, and assist if she started up uh, the attack, uh, dribbling past the Cameroonians, and also getting to set up, uh, set up uh, if you're in Obanu, before you come out, how to pull that cross through mm. for everybody to head in. Mm. And, you know, having that goal scored in eight minutes, it was really a massive breakthrough for Nigeria. And, you know, that was all, that's still it all for us going to the World Cup. So, uh, for me, Okobi was a major miss. Uh, uh, besides that, we have not fewer than seven players that missed out from the World African squad. Mm. Uh, we, we have players like Ikitu Vivia. Uh, we have also Macklin, uh, who is doing pretty well in, in Russia. Mm. And we also have players like East Essex. She's also been impressive with Potin Braga. We also have Regina Otsu, another fantastic midfielder, who also just won the French second division title with, uh, uh, with AS uh, Section TN. And they are already promoted to the uh, top line. So, uh, quite a number of players, quite a number of players who are missing out besides Ungoz uh, Kobe. But I must say, it's uh, exciting that we're seeing the likes of Esther Kuronko uh, responding to the squad. Yes. These are finals. These are key legs that were missing out for the women's half who could possibly have made a massive difference for our okay. tournament in, in Morocco. So, I think it's exciting Esther Kuronko returning. Uh, Desire of Finals is also making the squad. Definitely, these two legs uh, will be players to watch out for uh, in Australia New Zealand. And for the rest, I think it's no surprise. We're excited. This Monday is in. And uh, uh, we just can't wait to see what these teams will be able to do at this. We hope they can really make a difference. We hope they can really uh, make an impact. But overall, I think it's a quality squad, uh, despite the, the few misses, the few omissions. Okay. But no doubt, it's a very strong player for Nigeria. All right, um, these omissions that you have just um, listed right now, how detrimental would these omissions be for the team and for the newbies? Because I could see Imuran over there, she has been invited. What impact would they make, their inclusion make for the team going into the World Cup? Yeah, for me, uh, the exciting part for is we're seeing new players, young players coming in. Uh, Deborah Biodo is Another surprise inclusion that I forgot to mention, uh, not also ignoring uh, Jennifer, uh, who is with the University of Florida, Esther, uh, Biodun, Deborah, with the University of Steve Lock, that's uh, the, the university 
which uh, around, the, around the world drum do marriages at the moment. So uh, alongside Nigerian national team. So I think uh, these two players are fantastic legs, fantastic addition. And besides these two, Rofia, you did mention, and also Coastal Demet, these are products from the other 20 team who featured at the uh, Costa Rica Women's World, on the 20 Women's World Cup. They are fantastic players. They're currently playing for Standard Deren, and they've been impressive. They've had a wonderful season with Standard Deren, and uh, I think they, they, they are just coming in at the very right time. They are great addition, and at this point, we can easily ask uh, if, if they sound like Anomet will have a rest and at least possibly be a captain of the team from the sidelines. So it's a great inclusion we're having, great options. Uh, we only hope that injury does not in any way uh, make a damage to uh, political, uh, our campaign tournament in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, the, the Nigerian Football Federation, the coach of the side as a Nigerian women's um, football team, the Super Falcons, did not make an appearance at the just concluded NWFL Super 6. A lot we're expecting to see, even a little bit of inclusion from the ladies who played, who had their showings at the Super 6 in Delta State at Saba. But right now, the Super Falcons are placed in a Group A with Australia, Canada, and the Republic of Ireland. What chances do the nighttime African champions have against these teams? With the focus of these players on this list, what chances do we have? As you did say, we can only wait and see if injuries will not take any player out. These 23 players he has listed will be that that will be executing the games against Australia, both Canada and also the Republic of Ireland. So what chances do the nighttime African champions have got? Uh, well, I think to dive in, uh, before I get into our chances, I think uh, we, we must understand the cognizant of the period where we're playing our Super Series. Uh, long, the, the squad, like you did so, uh, has long been drafted. And it wasn't just a daylight thing that was brought to be done. It's been long, it's been long drafted mm -hmm. and definitely has already been domiciled with FIFA. Uh, this is just 35, few, uh, no fewer than 35 days to the Women's World Cup. So yes. you know definitely such requests will have been made. So uh, it's unfortunately time are not our friends. Even if we have had the options, it would have been easier, probably, if we had a local company. You know, unfortunately, that is not to be. The team is going straight to Australia. And that has, in any way, ruined the chances of players who could make a provisional squad. And this provisional squad will have given a room to list changes or list selections. So, yes. uh, as we said, we have made to do with what we have. And as, as, as for our chances, I think uh, we do have a very strong chance looking at the caliber of players we have. Uh, even though I think uh, inexperience could count against us, I think players uh, making their debut uh, from 23 uh, players sports definitely will really count against us in a bit. Uh, I think we have the same challenge at the women's at the women's half front, uh, where we had quite a number of debutants too, uh, even no fewer than 16 yeah. uh, debutants at women's half front. You know that inexperience will always be a factor. The coach too is also attending his first uh, women's World Cup at 66 year old. So, uh, it's, it's definitely not going to be an easy tournament. But notwithstanding, uh, Nigeria is, uh, and now I never say that uh, spirit is a major factor. You can't ignore that. Okay. Quality wise, also uh, overlook the potentials we have in the team. These are strong players, are playing regularly across various uh, continents. So uh, it's definitely will be a factor of uh, who, know, who, who, who desires the most okay. uh, in all the games we are looking and I think uh, we have a very strong chance. But again, it comes down to coaching, it comes down to selection, and it comes down to finding the right needs, and also the quality of motivation the players will get okay. going into it and everything. All right. Um, thank you so much, Samuel Amadu, for your analysis today. And we're hoping that um, the Super Falcons coach can take these analyses down to the bank, maybe help him down to the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. Thank you so much, and have a lovely night rest. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure being part of this show.